Hello. I have chosen a theme for this month, and I've decided that the theme is Abundance April. So what that means for you is all my content, all my offers and podcasts are all around the theme of abundance. Abundance is simply large quantities of anything, whatever it is that we're looking at. So you can create large quantities of things that you want and emotions that you want and feelings that you want and, and results that you want. And you can also create an abundance of things and emotions and results that you don't want. I assume you want to play in the realm of things that you want and becoming abundant in that area. So if that's the case, this month's theme is for you. It is going to lead us so beautifully into May's theme, which I'm not going to announce yet. So anyway, if you're wanting to create more of what it is that you want, keep listening. Welcome to All In With Ali Podcast, the podcast for online business owners and entrepreneurs who are ready to create the life and business of their dreams. I'm so happy you're here. And I'm so happy to be doing a solo episode. It's been a hot minute. I have had the most badass, incredible women on this show back to back to back to back. And usually I like to break those up with some solo episodes, but I was just like, why, why? Like the, the conversations are so good. They're so abundantly delicious and filled with all the things that we want more of, which is motivation and wisdom and, and true aligned guidance when it comes to creating more of what we want. So, so yeah, let's just, let's just roll it. Let's just do the damn thing. Screw trying to get in the middle of all that, but now I'm back. So I hope you missed me. I hope you missed some solo episodes because we're going to have a few this month, which I'm genuinely looking forward to. So like I mentioned in the intro, I chose abundance for this month's theme because these are the things that I've been focusing on. This is, I I mean, I was going to say like the work of my life, which is to align my frequency and my energy more toward and, and to be a match for more of what it is that I want. But that should be all of our goals right? Like we're co-creators. We've been given free will for a reason. We all have goals. We all have dreams. We all have these beautiful, wild, hopefully audacious aspirations. And I believe that if we have that on our heart, if we have a goal that is landed in our hearts, in our soul, it's because we have the capability to to create it. It's because it's by design. We're, we're meant to want that so that then we go and create that thing. So this is just, this has been my focus. I mean, forever, but I'm always finding new ways to fine tune this and to take this more seriously for myself. And when I say that, it's not that I don't take it seriously at least consciously, right? If you were to ask me like, do, do you take it seriously that you are the creator of your, your reality and your co-creator and your, you have the ability to, to create with your, with your thought, with the power of your belief and your thought and your intentions, I would say absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. But if you were to watch me day in and day out and you were to hear my thoughts and you would see how I go off course and get into these super negative thought loops, you'd be like, but you said that you believed it's like, it's like saying I want to be healthy, but then doing meth, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, I mean, that's a little dramatic. It's a lot dramatic, but, but it's kind of like, we all do this. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm constantly fine tuning this for myself in keeping myself in check and taking radical responsibility for where I'm at and what I'm creating and how I created it through the power of my thought, through the level of belief that I have, through the level of self-worth that I have. So I thought, you know what? I want to bring this here. I want to make this more of a group effort. Let's do this together. So what I would love to do in this episode, because in future episodes, we're going to go more into like how to create you know, we're going to, we're going to go into, okay, 
abundance is more of something. So how do we create the more of what it is that we want? We're going to get there. But before we get there, we've got to fine tune our lens. We've got to fine tune our filter that we look through life through. Because you can learn all of the tricks, tips, hacks, cheat codes. You know, you, you can watch a video every single minute of every day that teaches you how to create what it is that you want consciously. But if your filter is a shit filter and you're constantly looking through the lens of lack, then all you're going to do is just create more lack, right? Like I'm trying to think of a good example here. You know, I'm, I'm an analogy and metaphor queen. And by the way, I was thinking of this the other day. I use the two interchangeably because I do not know the difference between the two. So if you are a grammar queen and that makes you crazy, I really apologize, but I just cannot be bothered to like differentiate the two. So you're going to hear me use them interchangeably and it is what it is. Just go with it. But what would this be like? You know what this would be like? It'd be like you saying, I want to, I want to be a bodybuilder. So I'm going to go to the gym every single day. Cause you know that if you go to the gym often, you're going to build muscle and, and you're going to, you know, continue to get stronger. But the way that you go to the gym and the way that you work out is inaccurate. It's bad for you. You end up pulling muscles. You end up doing more damage than good because your understanding of the process of what you're doing is wrong. This is this is why we need to talk about what we're talking about today, because we got to get the foundation there. We've got to make sure that the filter that you look through your life is tuned for more of what it is that you want so that that's what you create so that we can more consciously create that, which we'll talk about in future episodes. But today we're going to fix that filter. So I had a really interesting experience the other day, and this is going to kick us off nicely and shocker. It's another analogy or metaphor, (laughs) whatever. I I can already see the DMS like explaining this to me and you're more than welcome to, but anyway. Okay. So it was in the morning and Cruz got this new airplane. He got this like cool little rubber band airplane and he shot it up into the air and it went to the top of our built-ins in the living room, like the very, very top. And he couldn't reach it. So I had to go over there and I had to crawl on top of the book, like the big shelf in the book case and anyway, and reach it to the top. And I was standing on the platform, which was safe. It wasn't like a bookshelf shelf. It was just like the flat platform the big shelf. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was standing there and I was really tall because I'm like standing on top of the bookshelf and I got his plane, but I turned around and I looked at my living room and my kitchen, which I look at every single day. I'm in there dozens of times a day, as you can imagine. But all of a sudden I could see the tops of all of our appliances and like other pieces of furniture in the room. So I saw the top of our curio cabinet off to the side and I saw the top of our refrigerator and I saw the top of, you know, some other cabinets in the room. And on top of these things were toys and like random things that my husband slides up to the top of these things. And I can't ever see it. Like I didn't know these things were there because from my vantage point that I usually look at the room through. I can't see it. I'm 5'3", right? So like, I can't see the top of the refrigerator from that vantage point. I can't see the top of the curio cabinet or these other cabinets. But does that mean that those things weren't there? Does that mean that the toys and the random whatever thingamabobs that that Chris slides to the top because he doesn't put them away in the cabinet or whatever, does that mean that these things were not there all along? So let's ask this another way. Let's say before I climbed on top of this bookshelf, Somebody came to me and said, hey, do you have this toy? Like, let's say there was there was this very specific ball that had got put on top of one of the cabinets. And if they came to me and they say, hey, do you have this ball? Like, do you know where this is? Is it in this room? And I'd be like, you know what? We used to have that ball. I remember. I think I remember seeing that ball. I've heard of that ball. But gosh, I haven't seen it in months. I don't think it's here. 
but I, I, I think maybe it got thrown away or maybe we didn't have it all along. I, I don't know, but it's, it's not, it's definitely not here. And they'd be like, are you sure? Go look for it. So what I would do is from my vantage point, what I'm used to being at, my, my most comfortable vantage point, all of five, three, I'd walk around the room and I'd look in the toy box and I'd look in the cabinets that are within reach. I might like stand on my tippy toes and look somewhere else. But would I find the ball? No, not that one. Because that one is at the vantage point of like seven, five. So no, I, I would not see it. So I would have to go to this person and be like, no, we don't have a ball. But does that mean, is that true? Like, is it true that the ball isn't there? No, the ball is there. It's been there and it will remain there. But I can't see it unless I change my vantage point. This is abundance. This is conscious creation. This is your life all the time. What you want, what you are looking for is there. It's always there. It's been there. It's been created. It's, it's possible. The results, the, the like whatever it is that you want more of. And I think like for this month, that would be so cool if you made a list of like, if you were to create an abundance of five things five things, what would that be? And to really feel into what that would feel like and what that would look like. But all of those things, whether you can see it or not, they're there. It's just that from your vantage point and the way that you are looking for it, you can't see it because you're a mismatch. This is frequency, right? This is everything, literally everything. Every point of every conversation (laughs) comes back to this. And I just had this moment. I'm like staring at this room. I'm like, oh my gosh, this stuff has been here all along. And if you have ever had a breakthrough in your business or a relationship or some area of your life where for a while it's felt like one thing and then all of a sudden you, whether you call it a quantum leap or a breakthrough, but all of a sudden it shifts, you have like, you you realize like it's it's been there. I just... I needed to look in a new place or I need to look at this differently or I I shifted this one thing and then this thing this thing shifted. But what I hate hearing and I hear this a lot and I I would be lying if I said I don't still get in moods where I feel like this too and I fall into this trap. But when people say like the people aren't there. Like if we're looking at this through the lens of business and we're using business for an example. When people say like the clients just aren't there, they're not following me. They're not like they don't want to buy. They don't. I I don't know where they are, but things have changed. And it's like, I'm sorry, that is such a cop out. And that is so disempowering to look at your situation like that. I don't care if you have five people in your audience. If you shift something, put something else out there, shift the way that you show up there will be a buyer. It just, it's probably because from your, like from where you're operating right now and what you're putting out, something isn't clicking. We're looking at this the wrong way from the wrong angle. We're coming at it the wrong way from the wrong angle. And we're creating from that wrong way and the wrong angle. And when I say wrong, like there's no right or wrong. It's just like, compared to what it is that you want, you're, you're coming at it from a very different frequency, right? You're looking at it and creating from five, three vantage point when everything you want is at seven, five, this is it. I also had a moment that if really illustrated or, and I've shared this a few times, but I have to share it here too, because it's, it's the exact same illustration, just said a different way. But right now it's spring as we know. And in Tennessee, everything is starting to bloom. And I was driving the other day and it was really interesting because half of the trees are blooming and they're like these really beautiful shades of green. And some of them have little tiny buds and some of them have full, you know, they're fully bloomed basically. But then the other half of trees are completely bare. They're in no rush to bloom at all. And you're looking at them, you're like, are they alive? Are they dead? I I don't know. But 
while you're driving, it's so interesting because you see what you choose to focus on, right? Like if I'm driving and I'm like, find all the dead bare trees, I'm going to find them and they're going to stand out to me. It's going to seem as if there are more dead bare trees than the blooming ones and vice versa. I can also flip it. So this is where I'm saying we've got to fix that filter. We've got to shift it because if you are looking through life or at life through the lens of what is broken, what isn't working, who doesn't like me, who doesn't take me seriously, who doesn't love me, who doesn't want to pay me, who's doing better than me, right? If you're looking through life or if you're looking at life through the lens of comparison or lack or scarcity, then when you go to create, all you're going to do is keep creating more of that. You cannot create more of something in the energy of lack. You can't. You're just going to create more lack of that thing. So the path to more is via the appreciation of it now. Looking for more of it now. And this is where you're thinking to yourself, but Allie, it's not there. I've looked everywhere. I've tested a ton of different offers at a ton of different price points. I'm trying. I've been doing this for years. The people aren't there from your vantage point from your vantage point. If we're looking at this from the from the perspective or the example of our businesses and you know those of us who are building businesses on social media which is most of us here, we all have a mixed bag of of people in our audience. There are always going to be people in your audience who are ready to buy today. There're always going to be people in your audience who are not ready to buy today. Who do you choose to focus on? Unfortunately, most of us choose, or let me say this differently. It's easier to focus on the people who are not buying today because that scares us, right? That, that is the, the big neon billboard that stands out to us that our brain is trying to keep us safe from. So we're going to focus more on that. So if you're focusing more on the people who do not want to buy from you today, Do you think you're going to create an offer that you are excited about and put it out today or continue to to pursue and serve the people who are there who want to buy from you? No. Or if you do, it's going to this is where people will create something be like, okay, well, people didn't buy it at the three hundred dollar price point. So I guess I need to take all of this value, all of my time and I need to mark it down big time because I don't believe that people can, can invest in the things that they want. I don't believe in people and their buying power and their discernment for what it is that they want. I don't believe in my ability to market properly, to, to articulate the value and the transformation of this thing. So let me just mark it down. That's creating from lack. You're going to create more lack. Even if people buy, now it's at a price point you're not even excited about. So that won't make you happy. You see how this works? We've got to shift the lens. So the path to more, the path to more abundance of what it is that you want is through the appreciation and looking for it and noticing it now. So take anything. So what is that list of five things? Five things that you want to create more abundance of money, love, joy, freedom, time, play, health, success, whatever those things are. Your job, and I want you to test this until our next episode goes live. Just test it, gamify it, play with this, okay? What harm can it do? And if you get this, if you're listening, you're like, no, like I I do this all the time, great. Do this and see how you can turn it up a level. But whatever five, and, and five kind of feels like a lot now that I'm saying it, maybe we do three, whatever you want, three to five. Do 10 if you want to. Who am I to tell you how to live your life? But pick a number that feels good for you, three areas. And I want you to, in the same way that I was driving down the road the other day and I could shift, like, what do I choose to to focus on? And this is, we've all heard like the car example for this, right? Like all of a sudden you want this dream car. You think about it all the time. You're dreaming about it. You're visualizing it. You're shopping for it. You're comparing models. And then what do you see? constantly around you all of a sudden, that car, right? You've shifted that part of your brain, cannot remember the name of it, where you're saying like, this thing is important to me. 
find more of this. And your brain says, absolutely. Well, guess what? When you are in constant stress or in constant awareness of the lack of the thing that you want, right? Like it's not enough sales, not enough clients, not enough time, not enough fun. When you are harping more on the lack of that thing, you are sending the signal to that same area of your brain where this is important to me. It is important to me that I constantly hyper-focus on where there is not enough money. That's important to me. And your brain says, yes, ma'am, got it. Okay, moving forward, I am going to make you hyper, hyper focused on the price of everything and ha- and and th- the level of your bank account and where you were maybe two years ago versus where you are now. And oh, ooh, and you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna like pull other people into your awareness who are doing really well. But instead of you looking at it from the vantage point of, ooh, there's proof that if they're doing well, I can do well. If there's proof that they're making money. So there's of course opportunities for me to make money, but I'm gonna look at it through the lens of they're doing better than you. They're taking all the pieces of the pie. You're probably gonna fail because they're so successful. So I'm gonna look at it from that vantage point. I'm gonna look at it from the five, three shorty vantage point versus the seven, five queen vantage point, you know? Like this, this, this is what we do. This is why it's so important to clean the lens and to shift. However you want to look at that, shift your vantage point, clean your lens. I don't care. Just do it. Shift it. So it starts with the awareness of how you are looking through things now. So if your three are money, time, health, then we first have to get radically honest with ourselves. What has been our predominant frequency, vantage point, energy around those things lately. Like let's say since the beginning of 2024, have you been mostly feeling good and expansive and excited about these areas? Or have you been more singing to the tune of lack in these areas? Be honest, because if we can be honest and say, okay, this is where I've been. I've been about right here. If you're looking at the video, I'm just like baseline, baseline neutral. I've been right here. Okay, and I want more of it. So how can I look at it from more of an appreciation? More, how can I look for more of it? How can I shift the way that I'm thinking, believing, and feeling about this thing? What do I ultimately believe? Do I ultimately believe that I'm never going to hit the money goals that I have? Do I ultimately believe that God does not want me to be successful in this area, that God doesn't want me to be healthy, that God doesn't want me to find the partner that I deserve, that I know that I deserve? Do I ultimately believe that God wants me to always struggle with money or only have just enough or on, or always have not enough? Do I think that that's why I've been putting it on this planet to, to be the one person who cannot rise above this area and create abundance in this area? I would hope your answer is absolutely not. So if you don't really believe that, what is the ultimate truth? I would assume it's God, of course, wants me to be successful. God, of course, wants me to to create prosperity in these areas and to serve and to help more people in my business through my unique genius and the thing that I've poured so much time into. Of course, God wants me to be healthy. Of course, there is a person out there that that is my match that I deserve that that's going to make me feel good that I can treat well. And, you know, we can create a future with like whatever your areas are. So if you really, really believe that, then how would you show up today? And how can we find more evidence of that? What I have found is that it's this is where the subconscious comes in, right? Because when you really look at it from the angle of like, is this my ultimate truth? Is this really what I believe that I'm not going to be successful? The answer is, of course, no. Like nobody really believes that. And if so, get support on that. But like most of us, we we deeply, deeply, or at least on a conscious level, we believe like, of wait, if she can be successful, of course I can be successful too. She's not more special than me. She's not more worthy than me. Maybe she's she has more experience and, and that means I can get more experience and I can get to that level. But to think that I'm innately broken or unworthy and can't have this thing. That's not real. But so many of us are operating at that level and looking at the world through that vantage point of it's just not meant for me. I'm broken. People aren't there. It's not meant to be. Your homework is 
again, to take radical responsibility for the way that you have been looking at these specific areas, which I mean, you can just really simplify that with, are you seeing what it is that you want in this area? Would you say you have an abundance of freedom or maybe you like you see you're on the right track. You are looking at it from the vantage point of, I know it's there. It's already here and more is always coming. That is a beautiful, abundant way to look at that area. That's great. But if you feel more of a lack of it, if you're more aware of the absence of the thing that you want, then we need to shift it. And then the second piece of your homework is if this thing was there, right? If it was in the room with you, in your world, you just can't see it because of the way that you're looking at it and looking for it and thinking of it. If it was there, how could we look at the situation differently? Where can we find and see and celebrate and amplify evidence of it here now? If you really were to believe that what you focus on grows, what you look for, you attract, the energy that you emit, you pull toward you, you create more of, how would you be feeling today? How would you choose to feel today? This is going to shift everything for you. And even if there are some of you who you have weird feelings about or Yeah, maybe you have weird feelings or you have a weird relationship or you're not quite sure what your relationship is with the law of attraction or energies and frequencies, which it's scientific. Like that's a conversation for another day. But even if you did feel weird about it, I totally get it. I used to be there too. What is the harm? And this is what I would ask you. What is the harm of feeling better and looking for more reasons to feel good now? Is there harm in that? I don't think so. That's not going to hurt anything. So be honest about your vantage point, how you've been looking at these areas, and then how can we look for more of it now? Just practice this, play with this, and be hyper conscious and aware of your energy around this thing. It's going to tell you a lot. And if you're feeling, if you wake up and you feel just like, for whatever reason, more funky about this area than normal. Like I had a day the other day related to just business in general. It's just one of those days I was just doubting myself. And I want to normalize this because the more women that I talk to at my level and above, like this, this doesn't go away. Okay. It's just like, how fast can we shift out of it? But I had this moment where I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, I just, let's just say my vantage point was very low. Okay. So I got out my journal and I just got it out of me. And I'm kind of weird with journaling. I, I'm one of those people that typically I don't want to write anything down that isn't what I want to create, but I actually prayed before I did it. I was like, okay, God, listen, I'm about to brain dump what's happening in my mind. And then I want you to help me argue against it and see it from a different angle. Okay. So when I'm writing on these pages, I'm not declaring is true. I'm getting it out of my body. God was like word. Okay. So that's what I did. I was just, I like brain dumped all of the shit that is just like all of the lies that for whatever reason were so loud in my mind. And I wrote it all down. And then with every single one, I kind of like compartmentalized each of them. Right. So let's say like one of them was like, you're, this is going to take forever, you know, like where you want to be your big goals with the podcast and with your business and with your clients, it's going to be like another 20 years before you get there. Okay. So that was like one, another one was like, you know, everybody hates you. Another one was you're doomed to be like this person, you know, and it's just like, whatever, like it's dumb, not dumb, but you get what I'm saying. Like a lot of these things, when you're looking at it and when you shed light on it, some of them do look so ridiculous and dumb. Like, come on. I don't actually believe that, but this is the vibration that is active in my body right now. So like, ew, get it out, purge this shit out of me. And then for each one of those, I said like, what, what is, what do I choose to ultimately believe here? Is this the ultimate truth? Truth. What am I replacing with this? And this is where I let God speak through me. I channeled whether that you want to say that's your higher self or God or source or whatever. I was like, speak through me. What is the ultimate truth here? How would you have me look at this differently? And what came through was pure gold. What came through was truth. 
And instantly I felt better. Instantly I was shifted. So you can do this same thing through journaling. You can do this same thing through meditation, through a walk, through listening to a song that just reminds you who you are through a workout. Like it doesn't matter. It's just like, what do you need to do to shift? And how fast can you do that for yourself? Try that until the next episode and see how fast things shift for you, please. Okay. And then the next episode, we'll talk about more consciously creating more abundance in specific areas. Okay. So before we go, I want to tell you a few things because I told you at the top of the episode that all this month is through the theme of abundant April, abundance April. And I have some really cool offers for you, including one new masterclass that I've yet to talk about, which I'm really, really excited about. So the first thing I want to share is my next LFG class, which is my low ticket $99 membership that you can cancel anytime. The next class in that is actually going down April 12th on Friday, and it's called Abundance Codes. So there are cheat codes to this game that is our life. There there are absolutely rules and guidelines that we can look at from a different perspective and utilize and embody and activate that actually give us like a cheat code effect that allow us to quantum jump, that allow us to create more of what it is that we want at faster rates and um, basically allow us to kind of win this game of life and, and to create abundance in the areas that we want. So that's the vibe of abundance codes. And I will link that in the show notes. It's going to be a class. And the idea is just to like blow your mind in an hour and a half and shift, shift everything for you and give you a good, give you a list of cheat codes that you can look to at any time to activate within yourself. Remember how powerful you are. So that's abundance codes. And then the master class that I was talking about is, is called the 10 K gateway masterclass. So actually, I'm sorry, 10 K per month gateway masterclass. Now I decided to do this masterclass because I create a boot camp that's happening in May called the 20 K per month boot camp. And the amount of people that came through that showed interest in that, but were like, I haven't even hit 10 K months. It kind of blew my mind a little bit. So I was like, wait, okay, whoa, whoa, wait. Obviously, like if you want to get in the 20K boot camp, and that's the goal that you're actively working on, I'll link that in the show notes and we'll talk about that later. But for right now, if you are not hitting consistent 10K months in your business and you have been in business for over a month, get in this masterclass. I'm not saying like if you're not hitting it yet, you're doing something wrong or you're in the wrong or you should be doing it after a month. I'm just saying like, Let's get this, the mindset and the strategy down pat so that you can hit these levels and transcend them fast. Okay. If you're happy with where you're at and and your goal is whatever, but like, you're not worried about when you're getting there, that's fine. You don't have to, you don't have to come to this class, obviously. But if you're, if you have these bigger money goals, whether that be 10 K months or 20 K months or whatever, and you feel like they're not clicking yet and you want to learn how to get there faster, get in this masterclass. It is a super, super low ticket masterclass. The the price will be changing as time goes on, but it's going to be a three day masterclass, April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So get in there. That's going to be linked in the show notes as well. And then the last thing that I want to share with you is I get a lot of questions about like what type of offer might be right for somebody because I'm always creating something new. So I created a two minute quiz. If you are looking for support in your business and you actually, you know that you want to work with me or you think you might want to work with me in some way, but you're not sure if you should do the mastermind or private coaching or one of these boot camps or whatever, you can take this quiz and I will be in touch and we can talk about that. Okay. So I'll link all those things in the show notes. That's all that I have for now. I love you. And I'll see you here next week.